Welcome back interior Alaska. Joe Cook here in a sports seat for you with your local Wednesday sports. The 32nd running of the Yukon Quest begins this Saturday. We recently talked to a couple of legends as they prepare for their 1000 mile journeys. One of the storylines of the 2015 Yukon Quest is a musher establishing a dynasty and a local living legend making a comeback. Alan Moore will look to win his third straight Yukon Quest title. He won his third straight Copper Basin title in January. And I do have something on my back. I guess everyone's after me now. I better be on my A game or they're definitely going to catch me. I just hope that everything goes right and we can keep enough dogs that we're up in the upper echelon uh, at the end of the race. And I think we have an advantage if we are, because this is our home territory right here. They know where the finish line is, and they will go very fast to the finish line. So keep that in on our side. Lance Mackey and his comeback kennel is aiming to do just that. After a year off for personal and health reasons, he's looking to reclaim his spot as the best in the business. But that will take some time. I have one veteran dog. Everybody else is uh, two years old this month. So it's a little bit intimidating to think I'm going to take a bunch of high school kids basically and go play against a bunch of professionals, you know. It isn't about uh, my race performance this year as much as it is getting some experience on these dogs and uh, getting my head back in order and, and focus on on uh, the future of this kennel, not just this year. Sponsorships are extremely important and both camps receive significant ones. Mackey's dog food sponsor is an Italian dog food producer in Forza 10, while Moore and his wife Ali Zirkel of SP Kennels are backed by Verizon Wireless. So this year we're hoping that the team, which is the handler crews that have to follow the dog teams down the trail, um, they're going to be able to be in constant communication, which is an important part of the race. There are some changes in this year's race. The mandatory stop in Dawson City City has been decreased from 36 hours to 24, but other mandatory four-hour stops like in Eagle or Central will be increased to six hours. Two rivers will be an eight-hour stop. Mushers can also pick a six-hour stop in Brayburn or Carmax. I didn't get a finish in 2013, and my, my goal for the quest is to finish with some dogs that uh, have a bright future and back to the roots and why I did this, and that's for the love of the sport, and just say thank you for supporting what we do. This is my way to say that sincerely. Keep racing. Moore and Mackey will compete in a 26 musher field that has 10 rookies and favorites like Brent Sass, Matt Hall, Jeff King, and Hugh Neff to name a few. This year's purse is $127,000. Saturday, the 32nd Yukon Quest will start and the 1,000 mile journey will end in Fairbanks. Alaska senior skier Logan Hahnemann is representing the interior on the world stage. Tuesday, he had a top 25 finish in the 1.3K Classic Sprint at the Under-23 World Cross-Country Ski Championships in Kazakhstan. His time of 3 minutes 10.7 seconds was 23rd overall. He was also 21st in his heat, and he made the, quarterfin the quarterfinals. The next race is the 15K Freestyle. Back in Fairbanks, two Nanooks won the last two best cup races of the weekend, and time mark set a sophomore. Won the 10K in 37 minutes and 11 seconds in the 5K and 17.23. Fahrenbach won Saturday's 10K men's race in 29.10 and then won Sunday's 10K in 29.43. Next for UAF are the Central Collegiate Ski Association Championships on February 13th in Minneapolis. Tuesday night features some Aurora Conference basketball at Boilu Hall. Monroe hosted the Hutchinson Hawks in the girls game. Jenny Benson and Leah Stepovich coaching up their teams. Hutch was in control for most, for most of this game. They were up 29-13 at the half and 40-17 in the third. Ashley Stark, she scored a game high. 14 for the Hawks, but Monroe, they made some shots and went for a comeback. Andy Clark, she scored eight of her 12 points in the fourth quarter out of that Maggie Wallace bucket. Maya Hadukovic, she made it an eight-point game with 130 left, erasing a 23-point deficit. But Hutchinson, they stayed tough, they calmed down, and they made enough plays to hold the Rams off. The Hawks win 49-42 and proved to 4-2 in conference play. They're 11-6 overall. Leah did what good coaches should do, and she started pressing us and, and doing some things to some of my, my more inexperienced kids. But it was good. It was a good experience for them to really feel that pressure. And then Monroe was able to make shots, and it, it, it got close. I don't know if I can say it. I wasn't worried. I mean, it definitely the run was coming, but I felt like our kids then did what they needed to do to hang on to it and secure the win. In the boys game, it was back and forth in the first quarter, down 5 to nothing. Hutch went on an 8-2 run, and they laid 
They led eight to seven under Morgan John three. Anthony Peter, he led the Hawks with eight points as well. But Monroe, they responded with a 13 0 run. They would just run away with this one. Jalen McCullough, he scored a game high 21 points from Monroe. Connor O'Kelly, oh, he had 10 points. And freshman Devon Davis, he made a brilliant move and hit a shot at the first half buzzer. He had 10 points as, re as well. The Rams were up 47 22 at the half. Monroe wins big 74 33. They are now 11 3 overall and 4 0 in the award. And that's a wrap for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.